It's called, I think it's called small talk, please forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, and uh, the, the idea is that you engage in these small social exercises to, I don't know, I don't know what it is. So, uh, okay, we have been back again, I was here like about a week ago in the exact same place. Uh, different, slightly different stage layout. I didn't have the free swag sunglasses this time. Anyway, okay, so uh, I'm Dan, Daniel Jones. Uh, this is my brand, The Aspie World. The kind of like, is a bit weird. People say, like, what do you do? Uh, and I kind of do a bit of everything, really. So this is, um, I run a YouTube channel, which is like my main thing. And I'll get into YouTube in, in, in a bit. But basically, um, I also, I'm a scientist, and I also have, uh, I'm a published author with a book that actually got bestseller in the US and the UK, which is kind of cool. That's why it's got author on there. But anyway, um, so that's kind of what I do. I'm also a musician, but above all else, I like to do talks and I do a lot of kind of events like this uh, because I have diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, ADHD, OCD, and dyslexia. So we're going to be like pacing through. We've got 20 minutes to talk about everything, which is really good to talk really fast. So if you're not really used to listening to somebody with ADHD talking, get used to it. So, um, so basically, after all, um, I am my YouTube channel. It's an award-winning YouTube channel. I won two awards. I won a YouTube Next Step Award. Basically, where YouTube take all the channels in the UK and they say which ones are going to be the best uh, and which ones are going to be the biggest YouTube channels um, of the future and then they kind of give you lots of money really and then they, they say buy equipment and make yourself really really good so I won an award for that which is kind of cool and I also won uh, an award for uh, it was number nine in the best top 40 autism blogs or information points in the world and uh, the National Statistics Society was number one and I was number nine which is kind of cool so I was kind of shocked when I actually got that award which is cool but anyway award winning which is quite fun uh, excuse me okay so the, my YouTube channel currently is at uh, 43,000 subscribers, which is a, a big chunk of people listening to what I have to say, which is quite fun. Because basically, I do videos on um, trying to educate um, or, or give an outlet for people who want to learn more about Asperger's syndrome in general and autism. But I actually branch out and talk about ADHD, OCD, uh, and autism uh, from from any kind of function, you know, to people who non verbal, whatever. I talk about the whole thing, and the idea was that I wanted to do something fun because when I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, I went on the internet and I was like, I didn't know anything about it. This is really, really fun. So I'd always been this like weird kid. I didn't really know what was going on with me, and then I got this diagnosis, and I was like, what? It's like all I've heard of is Rain Man. You know, you say autism or something, like Rain Man. It's like, what? I'm not Rain Man. So um, this is fun, as well, I guess, all the time. Like, yeah, I'm going to be like Rain Man. It's like, I don't look like Rain Man. Anyway, so I was like, okay, I didn't know anything about it. So I Googled it. And uh, I came across YouTube, obviously, a huge platform. And uh, there was a bunch of people on the table, Asperger's syndrome. Ha, ah, got it. Boop, put it on. I was like, I, just, I think I felt depressed. These people were just like, oh, I'm going to die. So I was like, okay, well this is no good. Because I didn't want to die, you know, I don't want to die. So I was like, I'm feeling really pumped because I play music, and I just want to jump about and do stuff. I don't know, ADHD probably. But um, anyway, so I was like watching this thing and I thought, God, I want to do something fun. So I decided to um, to start making videos of my personal experience with it. Because I've had some really interesting times growing up uh, having uh, Asperger's syndrome. Obviously, uh, you know, in like primary school, being the kid who was didn't go outside to play, uh, couldn't play with other kids, being indoors, playing with computers and stuff, and like programming computers and inventing things, you know, sort of time kid walking around like playing with electronics, and I thought it was quite fun. But it was uh, it was an interesting experience. So what I did is I created the Aspie World, and I kind of regret the name a little bit now. It looks a bit stupid, the Aspie World. Like, I was like, what's that mean? And they always say Aspire as well. People are like, the Aspire World. It's like, no, no, it's just Aspie. Because uh, the Aspie is uh, Asperger's, and, and sometimes on the internet it's, it's referred to as Aspie rather than Asperger's, and people with Asperger's and all that. So that's where the Aspie World comes from. But anyway, this is me in San Francisco. It's like my favorite place ever in the world. I was obsessed with it because uh, I don't know if anyone knows who do Asperger's, and they get super obsessed with certain things all the time. So I'm obsessed with San Francisco, and this is Golden Gate Bridge uh, in the background. So I was here uh, obsessing over it, obviously taking video because that's all I do. Uh, and uh, yeah, cool pictures. That's what I is all about. Let me go through my notes to make sure I'm covering all the things I want to talk about. And I'm on time as well. So I think I've got like 20 minutes to bear with. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Right. Where am I? Let's go. Sorry, my, my phone is. Okay, so YouTube. Let's see if this works. YouTube. Yay. Okay, so let's talk about YouTube. Uh, the, I decided to go on YouTube because YouTube has 1 billion 300 million active users, which is incredible. Now, when you're thinking about trying to reach an audience base of people to say, like, hey, um, you know, people buy books and stuff. Buy books is cool. But everybody now watches videos. I mean, I think YouTube is the biggest TV network in the world. In the history of the world, more people watch YouTube than any other TV show in the world. So I'm thinking, this is the best place to have an outlet to tell or share a story with people about your life, about other people's lives. I'm actually trying to educate people. Uh, I get so much feedback from my um, my followers or whatever you want to call them, subscribers, 
uh, just saying how grateful they are that the content was there because it holds value. It's all about giving value to people. That's what I wanted to do with it. Because the beauty of YouTube is that you can just go on and do whatever you want. You can put whatever you want. And, and I wanted to give people um, something of value and help people because I'm all about helping people. Like my book is about helping people. Um, I do a lot of kind of like voluntary stuff and I try and help charities and stuff like that because I love just make sure everyone is cool. So that's why I chose YouTube. Um, the other one is that YouTube is open access. Basically means that anybody can go online, log onto YouTube and start uploading videos. It's not biased, you just go on there. I mean, you're gonna get haters, you just dab them away. But you know, um, <laughs> that's, that's what happens when you have uh, you know, public appearance on the internet. But it also has freedom of speech. So you can go on there and say whatever you like. It's bad in a way because you get a lot of like, fake news, but you also get a lot of really cool things like me. No, uh, but you get a lot of like, cool, uh, lot of cool information about, about cool things. I found that really, really interesting. Now, the other part of YouTube that I found fascinating, and this is what really got me involved, is that the creativity part of it. Now, a lot of I do is I talk about creative, um, uh, like, flaring people, and, and everyone I know is like, ask Williamson, who all wants to do crazy stuff. So I got to play music. And, um, and obviously I'm dyslexic and then I wrote a book and I was like, how did you write a book? And then also I've got a YouTube channel, I've grown up to like 41,000. I've literally just come back from LA right now because I was in LA for VidCon, which is this massive YouTube festival uh, that happens in America. And I was there meeting with the owners to talk about neurodiverse panels for the future uh, and other things like how to make it more accessible for people on the spectrum, which is amazing. But the creative aspect of it is I can pick up a camera and I learn how to make huge, like proper good quality movies just for being on YouTube. And that is nuts. So I can focus in on this thing like super just like, yeah, this is going to be my new thing from now on, I'm going to be obsessed with cameras. Which I did, and I learned about it, and that's the cool thing about it. And YouTube's amazing, go on YouTube and learn anything you want. So I know I'm bragging about YouTube, they're not paying me by the way to say this, you know. <laughs> it's, it's just, just been being awesome. And the second reason is, um, I don't know, can I say first reason? I don't know, anyway, another reason is um, that uh, YouTube is where I built a community. Now one of the things is that, I said is that 1 billion, 300 million active users, and that's actively engaging with people, which I find fascinating. I just love numbers. So, um, and one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to help people, but I wasn't just enough. I wanted to put videos on about me, like, oh, you know, today, that's meltdown. <laughs> and, like, that was kind of cool. And then I do, but now I do good for videos. Um, I do videos on, like, how to uh, know if signs in autism in children, how to know if a friend is having a meltdown, what to do if somebody's having a meltdown, how to deal with anxiety, hacks, like autism hacks. Like, right now, I've got rubber shoelaces on my shoes. I don't know if you see my shoes, but I don't, I have a bad relationship with shoelaces. So I don't know if else on the spectrum has this. So I was like, forever, I can't wear Oh, she's a 30 year old kid rocking up in Belgium. I was like, cool. <laughs> and then, so I was like, what am I going to do? So uh, I, I was on the internet and I was looking for alternatives, you know, and I was thinking about making, you know, getting artistic bands and like fasting my own. But I did, I found these, uh, these laces. So I do hacks and stuff like that. Anyway, um, what I wanted to do is build a group with people who would be able to help each other because I feel like it's that whole saying, you know, you know, teaching them to, oh, you give a guy a fish, you can eat one day, you teach a guy to fish, you can, like, you know, he's going to eat forever. And that's a really cool way to put it. So, what I wanted to do is build a community of people who can talk and discuss. And, like, I'm not a parent of somebody with autism, but somebody who watches me, maybe, and then somebody else make one by information. So, I was like, oh. So, what I did is I was able to encourage people to talk about their experiences on my channel and exchange information and uh, build the community. And we also run a Facebook group, which is, um, I think it's like 1.5 thousand or something like that. But the idea of the Facebook group is that people go in there and discuss these ideas, which is super awesome. So that was the idea of, uh, of using YouTube because it builds community. And that's, I feel like that is uh, very, very important. And the last thing I'll say about YouTube um, is that it was like a confidence thing, right? Okay, so everybody who, <laughs> I'm a performer, this is why I'm able to stand up here in front of you all now and talk a lot of rubbish. And I hope some of this is sinking in or, or making some sense. But uh, I like performing, I play music, I play music, loads, loads, loads. Um, and YouTube was a way of, of, of building confidence. Now, when I first started YouTube, you look at my first ever YouTube video, it was rubbish. I was sitting there like, uh, okay, hello. So it was, I was so, I was stunned, like, it's like a million people watching me. And it was weird, it was weird, it was a weird experience. But what I did is like, I practiced that, I practiced that, I practiced it makes perfect. So I decided to have this persona, like the astral, what's going on guys, you know? Welcome to my channel. And it was cool. And by doing that, it gave me this confidence to be confident to do other things, which is why I'm able to do these events, because I feel like it's just like being on my camera, talking to my camera, I'm wearing sunglasses indoors, but it's like um, talking to my camera, but you guys are actually here, which is fun. But it builds confidence, and I kind of encourage this because if we don't have confidence, we'll never be able to have the ability to go forward with creativity to make ourselves, um, I don't know, successful in things, right? And that, that's super, super important. So, like, I love the fact that YouTube builds confidence because you're like your own little, like, TV host, and I think that's pretty, pretty awesome. All right, let's see if I've got the next slide. Ooh, that's a cool one, isn't it? Inspiration. I forgot how to slide on here. Right. Anyway, so, <laughs> sorry about it. 
you know, you know, like just a little place with ADHD. Right. So, um, <laughs> I'm actually going to take questions later as well. Because a lot of people might ask me questions. Like, oh, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to take questions. But yeah, I am done. I'm, uh, I'm going to power through just so we can actually take uh, some, some questions. Anyway, so, inspiration. Uh, basically, what I do is I, I try and encourage people to uh, to get inspired by things because I'm this, I'm a I'm really motivated to do stuff. Like I said, so growing up with like uh, with, with autism, like I had all, all my life, I was like, oh, this one's trouble. You know, you know, like this kid, you know, he's just he's not playing with the other kids. You know, I tend to see all these people growing up and I go, oh. and it was in the 90s as well. So and you bugger all about autism in the 90s, I mean, especially like Holly Head and Doc Will. Imagine that, like go to God, here you go. My son's doing a second violin at his toys, you know, and he's just putting numbers on this and talk to kids. And so they were like, yeah, he has a short term memory loss. Like, what the hell is that about? Short term, like, oh, he maybe just likes things. Like, okay, oh, he's agoraphobic. You know, you know, I just like huge sheet of things that, like, anyway, that was really funny. And um, so I was always put off by things, so I wasn't able to access, like, uh, so all the kids were on, like, school trips, be like, oh, we're gonna run this ride, and they're going crazy, and I'm sitting there, like, <laughs> you know, and everyone was just like, what's this guy doing? And, and the, the thing about it was I was super inspired to do something amazing. I've never been on the level of other kids. And this is something interesting, an experience that I can't really, I'll try and explain it, uh, but I don't know anybody who, who gets it unless you're on the spectrum. And it's kind of like you're miles away from everybody else's conversation. So like, I remember, I got to start at bus stops. So well, I, when I was in college, I had to ride this bus. Horrible experience. And public transport was massive trick for me. But so I'm at the bus stop, went for the bus in the rain, you know, how it is in the UK. And it was raining. I met these people, it's like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, well, I don't know you, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh, uh, weather's good today. And I'm like, no, it's raining, what are you talking about? Like, what is going on? And so all these things, I'm always like, I feel so distant. I'm like, why do these people feel the need, the, the, the compelling need to go and talk to a complete stranger in a public setting? I found it really, really weird. But of course, this is called, I think it's called small talk. Please forgive me if I'm wrong. Uh, and uh, the, the idea is that you engage in these small social exercises to I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, uh, <laughs> so the, 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 this is this how I exist most of the time. But I feel like this is, and when you feel when you feel distant from everybody, like you're sitting, it's like being all by yourself in a really crowded room. It's really weird. It's like everybody's talking a language. It's like it's weird. It's like I want to talk to a language. You know, understand it. I was like, what is going on? Like I never. I don't like going to clubs. I don't like going to parties. I don't like going anywhere with loads of people. No offense, you guys are awesome, but uh, you know. So and I and so with this, I got inspired to just do me. You know, and that was the idea. I was like, I'm gonna do something cool. So I better throw it. I could buy these toys. And I was more interested in the boxes that came with the toys. I could build stuff out of these boxes. You know, like Minecraft, but in like real life. And um, so that, that's what inspired me to to kind of go forward and search for inspiration in other people. So um, I do a lot of things. Um, I, I'm really kind of, I love creativity. Like, I'm inspired to be creative. And I always try and inspire other people to be creative. One thing I say is that um, one of my um, Patreon subscribers asked, they said, oh, my kids play Minecraft all the time. Does it start with good? I said, it's awesome because Minecraft is like a really cool way to engage your brain in something like super awesome. And also it builds some social interaction as well, which is something to remember about gaming. So I try and get people really, um, I don't know, I'm trying to switch on to the brain of somebody on the autism spectrum so they say, get them inspired to get to create more stuff and they'll be more confident and it will definitely help them later on in life. Well, help me anyway, I think, unless I'm a total freak, so please bear with me. Um, so um, this is all down to really to focus, right? And um, I'm putting a message on. So I focus on things. Like, I don't know if you guys have anybody on the spectrum, you know anybody on the spectrum, before you do, this is why you're here. Um, but like, I focus on stuff. There's two types of focus, right? <laughs> I get these, I get these small focus things. I'm walking past something in the street. I'm like, whoa, what is this? It's like a tiny piece of electrical equipment. I'm thinking, I can just pull this apart. I can make this thing out of it. Maybe I can make like a robot brain out of it. Maybe I can actually make something else. Maybe a coaster. I wonder where it came from. I wonder where the machine it came from. How does it fit in something? I don't think it's all of it. Now, it could be like a ball for hours. I could just sit and look at this thing. It really annoys my girlfriend. We're out and like, I've got to see this thing. Like, what is it? I don't know. I should go see it. You know, I get super focused on this. And, and, and it happens all the time. Sometimes I just block out a conversation. I'll just zone into this thing. And, there goes reality. I'm like, oh, I'm back in the room again. And the other thing of focus is that I get really obsessed with things, like really obsessed. My girlfriend can't stand it because she's going to spend thousands of pounds on mad stuff and I make her buy it. And um, it's, <laughs> um, we, we have, like, so um, I got really, um, I don't know, what was the Oh, I got really obsessed with um, search engine optimization, right? It sounds really boring, it's amazing stuff. And it's all about how the algorithmic uh, Google Smart Brain works. I love it. And it's how I make my videos propel forward. And I, I got so upset that I was like, oh, I'm going to learn everything I know about it. And uh, this is about, ooh, maybe four months ago. Um, so I stay up to <laughs> stay in school, I stay up in the morning. She's like, we're going to bed. So I'm like, okay, we're going to bed. Phone out. I'm like, shh, shh. Look at my internet. And I'm learning about these algorithmic changes, SEO optimization type content. And I love it. I love it. I love it so much 
that I watched this channel called Video Influencers, which talk about this thing, right? And I was like sitting there looking through, and I realized that they would miss, they missed the trick. There's something called LSI type keywords. I don't bore you with the details, but anyway, LSI type keywords are really into them. I knew how to optimize the videos better than these guys who do the video channel on this subject. So when I was in LA, they found out about me and wanted to interview me, and literally two days ago, I did an interview on their channel telling them how to do their own thing. It's amazing. <laughs> and I was very like, thank you. Thank you. It was literally, um, like, yeah, it, it was crazy. Like, I'd, I'd only been doing maybe two, two or three months, and that's the kind of thing I love doing, bearing the essential I drink. And I'm not going to this, so I can't keep talking. <laughs> Are you sure we know you? I know, that is true. <laughs> friends in the front, please. Uh, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> anyway, so focus. And, um, and so, another thing is that um, chemistry, I'm really involved with chemistry. Well, this is amazing. Like, I've been rubbish. I left school with no qualifications, nothing, bugger all. Teacher's like, not going to do anything, is he? It's just weird. It's like, oh, thanks a lot, you know. And anyway, I, I came out of school, I had no confidence, it's like, oh, sorry, I'll play music. So I did play music, I did performing arts, and that was scary, but I loved it. I loved playing music, I loved being creative. And then um, I think I discovered chemistry, right? Oh, that was good. So I discovered chemistry, and I realized that you could compute everything in the world down to the singularity, and that was just amazing. So my mind just, oh. so I did a degree in chemistry, which is pretty amazing. I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, and then, but with that, it, it, again, it's a focus thing, like you, you really um, drill down into something to, to get it into its purest form. Now, this is something I found quite interesting. Like, a lot of people say that people that Asperger's syndrome, all people on the spectrum, uh, can't use abstract thought, right? You might have heard this before, they can't do it on no abstract thought. And I feel like when I look at something, I think, how is this vague? You know, like, what is, what is inside it? So I made my own camera once, right? This is, a, this is a true story. When I was 18, I was like, how does a camera work, right? And then I realized that all it was, was um, a light um, a sensitive paper uh, taking a capture of photon experience, right? So the photon comes in, hits the light sensitive paper, and it brushes out. So I made this camera, I did it, I got a big box, I put a tiny hole in it, and then I put a shutter in front of it, and then I, I put some sensitive paper in it, did it, and developed a film, it was great. So to me, that is, that's not abstract thing, and I don't really know what it is. So I think it's the terminology people use, it's sometimes wrong and it's effective. They say they can't do this, can't do this, can't do this, can't do this. It's very academic and clinical and weird. Yeah? And I think they need to be more personal and really with people. Why? Let me see what time it is. I don't know if I'm okay. Oh, good. Look at time. Um, so, um, let me see what... Oh, I'm laughing. It's not a comedy show. It's my life. Don't worry about it. I've been laughing all the time. Don't worry about it. But, uh, Honestly, where are we? Hey, so autism in my superstar. This is a great image. I stole this from Google. So I, um, that's what I do a lot. I go find good images. Someone's like, oh, your slides are so good. I'm like, I know. I, I wish I had found you made them. But anyway, I am. Uh, <laughs> Honestly, this one, this one was as well. This one I stole off Google, but I didn't make this. So even though I am a graphic designer, I didn't make this. So anyway, so uh, autism in my superpower. Now, one of the things I do is I, I, I do a lot of talks on this. And this is why I kind of like, I put this into my talk right now and here is because I feel like too many people, and I did a video, I actually I did a video on my channel, they lost my superpower, I just did that like this. It was cool, somebody drew a cape on the picture as well, awesome. Anyway, um, and I always feel like it's a superpower because like, uh, it's, okay, so people always say to me, oh, you're really, really clever. And I say, I don't think it's clever. I think it's something that I do, but there's a lot of things that you do that I can't do. I'll tell you what I'd love to do, this is getting deep now. I'd love to be able to go to like Manchester City Centre on my own, just sit there and drink tea. I can't do that. I'd love to be able to get onto a bus on my own. I can't do that. Like, I can't, um, I can't read, you know, you can, <laughs> I'll go for this. So you get like a, 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 you get stuff to cook in the house, right? You go, you get your thing on the freeze, you look at it, and it says, right, do this, do this, do this. I'm looking at it, like, whoa, it's in Chinese. Like, I can't read this. Like, I can't read instructions. It's so difficult. But I can sit there and tell you about, you know, like the symmetry and group theory and chemistry if you really wanted to, and I'd love that. But it's not the it's not the thing that gets you through life as easy as the other stuff. And so when people say to me, like, oh, you're so clever, you know this thing. Like I was saying earlier, I was talking to somebody earlier, uh, one of the organizers, I was saying that when, when I did my degree in chemistry, I actually um, created a teaching tool. I actually taught the university something different. <laughs> I, I not only have to take a PhD through do your, your science degree, right? So instead I did it, I went on my own and I did this thing where I I fused Minecraft with, um, with chemistry and I made uh, something called molecular symmetry and group theory teaching tool within Minecraft, which is like physical computational chemistry, which is like super hard stuff, well, hard stuff. but it, it's, and I made it really, really easy. And uh, uh, by doing that, they were just like, whoa, what the heck? And of course, people think that's super clever, but it's not. It's just that it's something that I can do that they can't do, but just like I said, they can do loads of things that I can't do. And so they take it for granted. People take it for granted that you can just walk down the cliff. I, I envy it. And people walk down the street, like, oh, I'm just going to go, uh, you know, they go on holiday. It's like, I've eaten it. So I'm just going to walk down that one day. It's like, what on earth? Like, I wish I could do that, but I can't. And it's really weird. Anyway, enough of the deep stuff. Where are we now? Let's go back to, oh, no, what's wrong? There we go. Awesome, super power. Right. So, 
This is, this is what I'll end with before we get into some Q and A's and stuff. Unless you guys don't have any questions, and then I'll bugger off. But um, the uh, <laughs> I'm also going to take a selfie with everyone because I've never done that. We should do take a stage selfie. Actually, John, let's do it right now. All right, then we get the best smile before we get into the last part. We're going to take a selfie because everything on the internet exists as a selfie. It's like a new business card. You know, I'll meet people like, hey, I'm done. Hey, just take a selfie. Okay, here we go. Everybody, uh, put your hands up. So they can look a bit more exciting. Okay, we're going to take three, two, one. Cool. Actually, we should take a video as well. Okay, everyone shout like, yay, after three, okay? okay. One, two, three. Yay! Well, that was cool. That was pretty good. Very much. Right, let's get back to the presentation. Oh, I'm doing this going off on one. This is what ADHD is. What? Well, this. This will be on YouTube. Actually, this will be in my blog. Don't you worry. It will. Uh, probably Saturday. Young man over there with the glasses. Okay, so, uh, also my superpower, right? Let's get on to it. Okay, we'll do it. We're gonna power through, we've got a few minutes. Okay, so, uh, also my superpower. I wanna encourage people who have any kind of neurodiversity to be amazing at what they're good at, because everybody has like a focus in life. Somebody like, could be really good at numbers, they could be really good at art, they could be really good at something, and they spend five times of their time uh, working on people that become depressed. And I heard this amazing quote from Alan Watts, who's a Zen Buddhist, he was amazing. He said that, um, why would you live a, 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 like, you know, a, a secure job in an office, right, that makes your life miserable, especially people with ASD, which is depressed, it's one of all these medications, to have the security of a long life. Why do you have a really short life filled with happiness? Like, that was an amazing quote. So I always like to try and teach people to just do the thing that they love in life. Because you're only alive once, right? I mean, like, come on, what do you do? See, that's like, yeah, I worked in an office for 60 million years, and I hated it. Like, who, who's ever said that they love doing a boring job? So just do something amazing. So um, yeah, this is what I did. I decided to have a system in place that I would put down the things that I felt passionate about, what I wanted to do, like how do I want to complete something amazing. So I got this thing called the focus bar. You might have had the focus bar, so you start all like a focus list. You write down a list of things you want to do, like I want to be a millionaire or whatever. I don't, I don't but I'm just saying like you know, people write that down. And I decided to make a vision focus bar. So I got, I got a, uh, a big, a big like A4 thing. I put all these parts, it's actually the background of my phone as well. So and I put all these parts and what I wanted to do. One of the things I wanted to do is I wanted my band to have a rap out, okay? I'm in a band. And we never had a record, I've never had a record deal, so I was like, I want to, I want to, I feel like if I put it down and see it in physical format, my, my mind and everything I do will change to this one focus, because I knew my mind could focus on things like we just spoke about, but I want to see if I can align the universe to do it. Sounds a bit weird, but bear with me. Um, and so I did this, and I was like, I want to have a record out in Japan, and uh, it was amazing. I actually, uh, about four or five months after creating this thing, said, record out in Japan. I didn't know anybody in Japan, obviously, um, and uh, I came across a record label, Real Life of Band's Music, and we already had this record that was already recorded, and the label said, open it out, and we were like, okay. And it was a huge deal, it was a big, big deal, and actually the, the record got to number five in the newcomers charts in HMV and um, Tower Records in Japan, and, um, and it was just there, you know, sitting next to the liquid, too, Green Day, all these like other like punk bands, and it was crazy. And like this guy from Holly Head just managed to get his CD into Japan. It was all due to focus and allowing myself to have that focus, which I found was amazing. Now, um, I also, I told you earlier I did a degree in chemistry, so I left school with no, um, no uh, qualifications above all. And I remember I had this huge meltdown in a place I was trying to work at, and then they sent me home, and I just had to work from home, and it was all this stuff. And it was horrible. My psych was like, look, this is damaging your mental health. And I was like, oh, shit. So I'm like, what am I going to do? And, uh, and I never had any qualifications. But I was like, oh, what do you want to do? I said, I want to be a scientist. So I don't know how things work. So then I was like, I've got no qualifications, but I want to be a chemist, right? So then uh, I decided that I would, again, focus, just don't say, like, I'll, I want to be a scientist. I can, I can do that. Like, you know. So I did. And I, and I went straight at the path. I started right at the bottom. Boom. And now I have a degree in chemistry, which is crazy. You know, thinking I'm a scientist, actual scientist. That's a weird thing. You, you trust me with science. But, um, you know, uh, it was quite funny. And again, it was all down to focus and allowing myself to be able to focus and having the support from my family to say, okay, focus on the thing that you're good at. Because everything else, like I said, working a job or something in like a uh, convenience store, I mean, people may love that. They love that social interaction. But, I mean, it's like torture to me. So um, that was kind of cool. And then, uh, oh, here's, here's an really interesting one. Um, I got two points left. I want to say some questions. I am dyslexic, super dyslexic. I can barely read stuff, right? When, when people send me letters, I get an audio disc from like government officials and stuff, so I can listen to it. And it's really an interesting concept. So um, I love learning things, and like I did a degree, it was really difficult. But my Macintosh actually speaks, so I, I use Mac because it can actually kind of hear it and speak to you, and I think that's amazing stuff. So Siri is like my best friend, and so is Alexa. Uh, and when he's talked to me, my life changed my entire world. And I'll tell you this now, that's my girlfriend. She, everything, I wrote everything on apps, oh my, my life is amazing. Um, so, <laughs> I was like, I need to write a book. I'm gonna write a book one day. I said this to my girlfriend, so I'm gonna write a book, so I don't okay. So I said a lot of things. And then she was like, you gonna write, I'm gonna write a book with me. Anyway, so I got a book deal, I got a publishing deal to release a book. Crazy, right? And so 
uh, the book, I, I worked really, really hard, and, and what I did is I dictated my book to a ghostwriter, and she, she wrote it out in, in a format people could understand, rather than this weird gibberish I'm talking right now. And so, um, the book came out in November last year, and I got an international bestseller with it. It went uh, number one on Amazon in the US, and number one on Amazon in the UK, which is totally crazy. Even to the point that uh, Piers Morgan invited me onto a TV show, and I was sitting there on Good Morning Britain's office, actually on a fight with the guy, because it's a bit weird. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good, it was good. And he said my hair was green, but it quite clearly is vibrant blue. So I was like, this is here, Piers, it's blue. And so, yeah, uh, <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't good. And, uh, and so, so the last thing I'll say about focus, why I, I, I choose to tell people like you need to focus on the things that are amazing in your life, especially if you're on a spectrum, um, is because uh, with YouTube, I, I did, you know, having this like building a community, the worst thing, like my worst fear is like social interaction, right? Um, so I built this community based on people socializing online because there's a safety barrier. You can take as much as you want. So uh, people say, oh, how can you do all this stuff? I said, well, I set up a camera and I talked to a camera. It took a bit of time to talk to the lens. That's another story. But it, 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 I did it in the end, and I, and I do talk to the camera. And it's nice because I'm in control of how much interaction I have with those people, right? And no one's forcing you to do it. But I, I find that in life, people force you into these, these categories. Like, you have to go in, you have to do that, you have to make an appearance here. It's like, what, man? So um, I built my channel, and I wanted to focus on it. So in November, after my book came out, I was like, right, next product. Um, I already had this YouTube channel. It was only small, it was only a small YouTube channel. Maybe about 10 to 11,000 subscribers, right? And I was like, I really want to focus my energy on it. And I, I was also talking to you about earlier, I did search engine optimization, which is how you get your stuff discovered online. So I was like, right, I'm going to beast this. So I, helped, I focused on it, super focused on it. And I uh, streamlined my content. And like I said, today I hit 20, uh, no, 43, thousand uh, subscribers on the channel, which is crazy. And like I said, I just went and met with VidCon in LA and they've invited me over there to do a talk next year and also Summer of the City, which is a big event in London this year for other kind of YouTube events. They asked me to do a talk there as well, which is amazing. But the idea was that I focused my energy on it and I actually said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I did it, which is pretty, pretty cool. So autism is a superpower. It's never a bad thing. A lot of people find it kind of like uh, a bad thing that's negative, but I always say negative is a positive. So I, I always think, oh yeah, can't, can't hit my head like that. Can't keep doing that. I've broken my hands too many times, you know, thrashing out and stuff. And actually, I'll tell you my a key. Somebody, you might ask me this question. I, uh, people say, how do you carry yourself down? How do I get over? Kind of hit my head a lot of time, breaking my hands is due to my diet, which is really weird. And that's, that's the last thing I'll say. If you know anybody who's having a hard time with the meltdowns and triggers and stuff, try them on a gluten free vegetarian diet, cut out sugar and caffeine. That will really, really help, especially alcohol as well. I, I, and this is, this is a true fact. I, you know, growing up, you're a young lad, and everyone's like, oh, you go to a birthday party, don't we? It's like, oh, God, I don't want to go to a pub with those people. So, like, yeah. so I used to drink alcohol to go there to be like, oh, you know, rolling in the door. And then it made it even worse because then it made the ADHD worse. I was on tables like, woo! You know, and everyone was like, what's going on? Why is this like young man running across tables? And I get kicked out and get arrested and all that stuff. Anyway, so that was me and my story. So I am done. Thank you so much. And I want to take some questions if anybody has any questions. So thank you so much for listening, everybody.